What's going on, boys and girls? What's up, world? Austin John plays here, and welcome back to another episode of Shrine Hunters. We've already done the Great Plateau, Dueling Peaks, Satino, Lanaru, Farron, and Lake Tower regions, and now, by popular request, we are going to be doing Gerudo Tower. So Gerudo Tower is located right here next to the Berta Hideout, a little bit north of the Wasteland region. And from Gerudo Tower, the first shrine that we are going to be going to is just northeast of it. It's the Ka Takar Shrine. When you first find the Ka Takar Shrine, it's going to be covered in a giant block of ice. You either need to use fire arrows, hit it with a couple of fire weapons, or set up some campfires nearby to thaw it out. Once inside, your goal is to make your way to the top of the structure while carrying an ice cube, avoiding flame hazards on the way. First, make sure you don't have any fire elemental items equipped, because that can affect that. So this is the ice cube that we need, and we need to bring him all the way up to the top. First, we're just going to walk up the stairs in between these giant flames. We're going to drop the ice off right there, and we're going to make our way on forward a little bit. And right here, this giant block of metal, we're going to take that. We're going to use them to block out the flames. If you can't get it to block out all three, that's not a problem. I'd recommend just blocking out the first two, because you could take it and then just throw it, and you're good to go. Next, you're going to place the giant block back into the lava. Carefully position it to block out all the flames as you progress. Now for the chest, you just take the giant block, put it down there, and fly on over to the chest. Inside, you're going to find a frost blade. Make your way on back up with the stairs. For the last area and the giant flames, you're just going to need to throw the ice directly through the flames. So get pretty close and chuck it over. Use the giant block to shield yourself from the flames, and carry your ice cube to victory. For your next shrine, you need to make your way pretty far throughout all the snow fields, all the way to over here, to the Kema Kosasa Shrine. This one is going to be found right out in the open, shouldn't be too hard to get to. Inside of here, we're going to have a major test of strength, and you're going to be going up against a Guardian version 4. Now these guys have a lot of health, and in this battle, there's going to be nothing to protect you from them. After defeating the Ancient Guardian, it's going to open up your doorway. And inside of this chest, you're going to get yourself a Silver Rupee. Pretty fantastic. Our next shrine that we're going to be going to is the Sho Dantu Shrine. This one isn't too far away from Gerudo Tower, and it's overlooking your entrance to the Yiga Clan hideout. From Gerudo Tower, you're just going to go a short ways northwest. In order to make this shrine appear, you're going to see a message here. If you seek power untold, offer a shining blue stone. What it wants is a luminous stone, and luckily, if you don't have any, I think I know a place that you can get some. Then just drop a luminous stone from your inventory onto this pedestal, and the shrine is going to appear out of the ground. Once inside, there's going to be a tale of two bombs, as I like to call it. As soon as you enter, bomb the barrels on the left. After you bomb the barrels on the left, you're going to come to this room with this pillar that throws you up into the air. Right behind this giant pillar is going to be your chest for this area. And inside of here, you're going to get five ice arrows. Now we're going to take a bomb, we're going to throw it onto the far side of this, and detonate it when it's in the air. That'll activate the switch to the next room. In our next room, similarly enough, we're going to come across pretty much the same thing. Drop a square bomb on the platform, and drop a round bomb behind it. Now we're going to stand back, detonate the round bomb, immediately switch to the square bomb, and detonate that. That'll open up the door to the third room. What we're going to do in this room, we're going to drop a bomb down on this guy. Throw a square bomb onto the platform as well. Jump on top of this platform right here. Detonate the square bomb just over that switch. And detonate the round bomb when it's over the switch again. That'll give you access to your shrine orb. For our next round, we're going to be heading north of where we just were for the Gerudo Summit. Right here, you're going to find the Key Yoga Shrine. If you haven't had access to this area, one of the best ways is going to be coming from this way. It's, it's pretty much a straight path up. Now, in order to activate this shrine, there's going to be a switch that you're going to need to hit. And I wonder what you're going to need to hit it with. The trick for this, we're going to need to climb up the cliff just opposite of where that giant target on the wall is. And once you're at this point, oh, it's my thunder buddy. Hey, buddy. Thank you for visiting me up here. You're welcome, Austin. Good luck figuring out the shock arrows. Mm -hmm. 
So what you're going to do from here, you're going to glide on over to the giant target, and you're going to shoot a shock arrow directly into the middle of it. You need to be absolutely on point with your precision of getting it into that little tiny target in the middle. If you're slightly off, it won't count, and you might need to do it all over again. So, maybe it's not a bad idea to save on top of that giant cliff that we just climbed on top of, and took us two minutes to get up there. Once inside, we're going to receive Kiyug's blessing, which is a diamond. And also your spirit orb, that too. For our next shrine, we're going to make our way over here to the Juluna Shrine. This Juluna Shrine is just going to be north of the Wasteland Tower. If you came across this little pathway on your way over to the stable, then it shouldn't be too hard to find. For this one, it's going to be a test of endurance with these Gorons over here. For the first part of this two-part trial, you're going to need at least two parts of heat resistance. Keep in mind, the Gerudo Veil, the entire set, only gives you one part heat resistance. If you step on top of here, you're going to see that you are already in the red wearing only the Gerudo Veil. However, the Gerudo Veil and an ice weapon, and you'll be just fine. However, for the second part of the challenge, you're going to need flame resistance. Not heat resistance, flame resistance. For this, you need part of the Flame Breaker armor, at least two parts of it. Or you're going to need yourself an elixir using fireproof lizards. Once you've completed that, make your way into the Juluna Shrine. In the first room, you're going to interact with the terminal here. And the trick is to make all of these activated by the electricity. So you're going to spin your controller around a whole bunch. And that's going to open your doorway to the second area. Make your way to the apparatus and you're going to put your controller in a sideways pattern and face it a little bit up to the left. And you're going to use this wind tunnel to make your way over to the chest. Or, or fall like I just did. Now from here, return to the apparatus. And we're going to twist this controller, that way it's hitting three of these windmills at the same time. Now you're going to use Magnesis to grab this giant cube. And put it onto this switch over here. And simply glide on over to this switch to activate this one. That will open up the door in the rear of the room. Now we're going to use Stasis on the switch that we just stepped on. And you're going to run to the rear of the room as fast as possible. Once in the final room, first thing we're going to do is use fire on the bushes over here to collect the chest. And this is going to be a Gerudo Spear. Now you can use Magnesis to grab this chest and put it on the switch to keep this switch activated. Making your job a lot easier going forward. Now you're going to spin this apparatus around and light all the flames. So if you angle your controller diagonally, you should be able to get almost all of the torches lit up without touching the water at any time. There we go. Alternatively, if you want to do it the way it was designed for, use stasis on that, and then uh, then that makes that a whole lot harder. But if you just hold your controller sideways or diagonally, you can do it pretty easy. And then all that's left is for you to get your spirit orb. All right. For our last shrine, we're going to make our way to Gerudo Tower. We're going to be activating the Sasa Kai Shrine. For the Sasa Kai Shrine, Cass is going to be here. He's going to tell you a story that involves the tower and that pedestal right there. So between 3 and 4 p.m. you're gonna stand on the center of this pedestal and you're going to fire a regular arrow toward Gerudo Tower while it's blocking out the sun or even slightly above the tower. When you do that, it's going to activate the shrine coming up from the ground. Inside of here is gonna be a modest test of strength. Keep in mind electric and ice weapons are gonna freeze in pretty well. And they're generally weak Tejit weapons themselves. So if you have any, great time to use them. After you defeat your guardian scout, make your way to the rear of the room and get your prize. Which is a frost blade. And then to finish it up, grab your last shrine orb of Gerudo Tower. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, all of the shrines from Gerudo Tower. If this was helpful, be sure to drop a like. Also, you guys can vote on which shrine you want to see next. Within the first 24 hours of this video going live, be sure to watch it. Check out the comment section for all the remaining areas and like the comments for the ones that you want to see posted next. Till next time, Austin John out. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. I'm going to be giving you guys lots of helpful videos in the next following days and weeks. Till next time, Austin John out.